Hey guys, I'm Mike, and on today's Frankenstein Tech Series, we're going to be talking about valve springs. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into some of these valve spring materials, their finishes, and any heat treatments that they might get. Absolutely. So first things first, every valve spring is made out of some particular steel alloy or stainless steel alloy. Now, we don't have that information per se because it is all proprietary to these three different manufacturers. However, you can take comfort that that's basically what it is. Now, when we start looking into different heat treatments, that's also unfortunately proprietary and even we don't know that information to explain to you. Anything that we would receive would basically be outdated and not of use. The one, or one thing we do really have a little bit of a grasp on <clears throat> is gonna be on the finishes side. Now, we've looked at that before and you can notice a very distinct color separation. And that is gonna be the shot peen ones, which are all here. This one is a combination of shot peen and polish. And also nano peen, which is going to be what some companies call a super finish, as well as polish. So this is a polished piece. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but that one might have been nano peen and then polished. I'm very unsure. That PSI is a little secretive about their stuff. And for a good reason. They make great valve springs. They don't want somebody to copy them. I get it. But if we just go ahead and dive in, what is shot painting, right? It sounds pretty simple, but it actually is really simple. So shot painting is cold working process used to produce a compressive resonant stress layer and modify the mechanical properties of metals and composites. It entails striking the surface with media at a force that's sufficient to create deformation. Now, it sounds pretty scientific, kinda is. Almost sounds like you read that right off of a board or something. I, I never did that. I memorized it. Hmm. I, I totally know what I'm talking about. You sure? Yeah, I'm an engineering student. I know everything. What it's doing is it's basically perfecting the outside of the metal itself out of the spring. And that's going to lead to a longer cycle life. If shot painting sounds good, well, guess what? We got one more for you. PSI invented or really wrote a great paper on uh, nano painting. And nano painting is a, almost exactly like shot painting, except it uses much smaller media. When you use smaller media, what I mean by that is just imagine maybe 0.3 of a millimeter, of a millimeter all the way up to 0.8 of a millimeter of a, just a little ball. And what that ball is doing is you've got millions of them going through a tube and you're shooting them right here at the valve spring itself. That produces a finer finish. That's gonna, once again, take shot painting to the next level. After that, we actually have a super duper wonderful treatment that is not shot painting. It is not nano painting, but just like Ted Williams, it's cryogenic, okay? And what we mean by that is cryogenic hardening. They take a spring here, and we don't really have any here as far as cryogenic treated springs because those things are <whistles> pricey. What you're gonna do is you take a spring or a batch of springs and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna put it into a chamber. When you put it into the chamber, basically they lower the temperature down lower and lower very slowly, all the way down to a negative 196 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but I don't wanna live there. Sounds like Alaska. Just to be clear, Mike is an engineering student and is not a meteorologist. He is also not associated with Weather Channel. In fact, he does not even own a TV. After that, what it's doing is it's basically just performing a much harder material. It can change spring pressures, so you can get a smaller spring that has higher pressures for, I don't know, maybe something like a cup engine. Now you start talking about NASCAR cup valve springs, you start getting into basically like the mafia, where if you talk too much about it, you end up with like Jimmy Hoffa. So we don't want to get too deep in there because I enjoy living. <laughs> However, we can go ahead and now we can move on into looking at some of the different install heights, open heights, coil binds, and even that one special word that no valve spring manufacturer loves to hear, harmonics. Dun, dun, dun. 
So today I wanted to just briefly touch on harmonics, not necessarily exactly what they are because that can be a whole class in itself, but I want to share the importance of why we need to control them in the engine and specifically the valve springs. Now, if you've ever heard of the idea of a, a lady singing to a really high pitched noise like this and it cracking uh, or shattering a glass, it can actually happen given the harmonics match perfectly, the natural frequencies match perfectly, but it has to be crystal. So it's actually a thing, it does work. And another thing that you can look at is, if you'll do me a favor, is you can either click here or Google or YouTube Galloping Gertie. That was an old bridge back in the 50s that was built in Washington State. It was built really well as far as materials and whatnot, but we didn't know nearly as much on harmonics as we do today. That bridge eventually did fall down because of the way that it was moving up and down and twisting and whatnot. And the new one has been built since then. If you're walking by some power lines and you hear that buzzing noise, a lot of people just assume that it's just the current of electricity flowing through that line. When in reality, it's actually just like a guitar string, the wind passing by that line and you hear that buzzing, that's actually the harmonics in that power line. Without a doubt, and harmonics, as we mentioned before, they're a natural enemy to valve springs themselves, but they're also, they're all, they're everywhere around us. My uh, beautiful voice, which is a mixture of Jesus and Fergie breaking a perfect crystal, can do the same thing that a really violent lobe on a camshaft can kill a valve spring. It's, it's the same exact thing. And now they also have another common enemy, which is usually the user, but let's go ahead and let's, actually dive into some math. Let's look at some numbers. We're gonna go grab the Buxton setup. We're gonna go do some pull downs, show you guys the differences between some of these different valve springs as far as what you're gonna be looking at. What do we mean by install height? What do we mean by seat pressure? What do we mean by over the nose? What is coil bind? All these different things here, these really highly technical terms on your first day of valve springs. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're back over here in our assembly area right now. You can hear the machines buzzing, guys putting some stuff together. And I wanted to show a couple of different scenarios with valve springs using our Buxton Engineering Spring Tester. Now, I want you to keep in mind of a couple things as far as how advertised spring numbers come from manufacturers. Most In, in most of those cases, they are including um, a little bit of safety measures in most cases, as well as spring rates and pressures whenever the spring is slightly worn, basically after engine break-in. So these are all brand new springs right now, so they're all a little potent. Now, first one that we're gonna check out is this conical spring from Comp, the single conical. Now, on this shot here, you can get really tight on it as far as how this design truly is really different from anything else out there at the moment. And we're gonna get to see a little bit of some different results. So right now I've got a target install height of inch 800. I've got valve lift at 675 thousandths and I'm gonna give it a pull down real quick and let's see what we get for results. So it's showing 119 pounds of seat pressure and over 400 pounds of open pressure. Now here's the one really weird thing about this valve spring. The advertised valve lift is, or max lift for the spring on Comp's website is not 675. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know it's not 675. Also, my Buxton here is telling me that I've got a coil bind clearance of 93 thousandths. Now, if you ask basically the gentlemen that were involved in designing the spring, they normally like to see something between 60 to 100 thousandths on most typical dual springs. Here on a conical, I know for a fact that you can get away with tighter coil bind and what we mean by that is as the spring comes down that moment where all the coils are touching that is coil bind right and as you can see you can see how it stacks up so the top coils are relieved first and then everything else starts to come back so now here I'm gonna give it one more pull it's pretty interesting to watch it work and now granted, yes, this is a handheld test. My arm is gonna pull differently every single time because I'm a human and I'm not perfect. So therefore it's gonna give us a little bit of different results based on how fast or how slow 
I pull in relationship to what the Buxton can measure. Right now we're looking at 122, 401. This is all pretty typical and pretty standard what I would expect. Now we're gonna take this guy off here and we're gonna to go to our stock spring that's made by Pack. This spring is made for general purposes. Um, naturally aspirated 2650 blower packages, uh, turbo packages, nitrous. It, it's really a general spring that's, it's really, really good and has a lot of really good qualities. It's got a shot peen outer with a polished inner, which is something you can't really see. And I'm gonna show you guys just a little bit about what it's capable with. So on this Buxton here, I have to set the retainer on it. And luckily I didn't measure it. We're gonna install this at inch 780 because I like to run my stuff a little bit tighter. And let's say we can go 700 with it. Okay, now we're ready. Let's give her a pull. Now what you'll notice is a spring rate is really close to the conical. However, we have more seat pressure. We have 149, let's just round it up, call it 150 pounds at the seat. And then we've got 437 pounds open. At 700 thousandths, we're also at 115 from coil bind. Now, here's the thing. When you run a conical spring, you can run tighter coil bind because it has less oscillation. As we go down on a typical dual spring, if you watch, as the spring comes up, it too also releases kind of from the middle and then the outer coils get the separation. So what that means is that if we go to max lift somewhere around here, in reality, if we have a little bit of not happiness in the valve train, it can do that right there when we're over the nose, just like when we're at our install height after we return back to the seat, we can see oscillation like this. Now that both of those things are bad and that means something's usually not happy in the valve train. Sometimes it's just completely unavoidable. But if you ever, if you want to take a look at something like that, you can go on PAC's uh, YouTube channel or Facebook and they have some uh, older Spintron videos when they're doing some cup stuff. Now we're going to go to the big bad boy deal here. This is going to be a really, really big, this is a valve spring for solid roller applications. It's a PAC 1228 and I'm going to have to change one more parameter here. We're gonna to go to a retainer thickness of 100 thou, which does come into play on these setups. We're gonna to go to target install height of two 100. And let's go ahead and let's open this sucker up to 900 thousands, okay? And then let's see what we get here on this. Now this is a little bit beefier. We've got 269 pounds at the seat, 865 open, coil bound clearance of 160 thousandths and a spring rate of 662 pounds. Coil bind is inch 041. What does that all mean? Well, that's a lot, a whole lot of numbers, isn't it? And if you looked at it, you might even say, well, hey, this spring is good for up to an inch of lift. Maybe. It all depends on your camshaft. It all depends on your rocker ratio. It all depends on the entire system and everything. We recommend for running this thing around 900 thousands. That's what most of our customers have ran. That's what they like. That's what PAC advertises. And it seems to work really well. So from here, let's go ahead and take it back over into the dining room. Guys, that's gonna do it for today on our valve spring video, at least introduction to valve springs. We're gonna get in more, uh, a little bit more in depth in the future as far as testing and things of that nature. But for now, you can do us a big favor by liking, subscribing, and do not forget to ring the bell if you guys want to see more of this type of content. If you want me to get a haircut and shave my beard, that's too bad. If you want Gavin to grow his back, comment down below. And if you'd like to get in touch with us, if you have any questions, suggestions, things of that nature, you can go ahead and email us right here.